I had to restart it. So today's topic, what we will discuss is about pteridophytes. So pteridophytes are the first vascular plants. So you should remember that pteridophytes are the first vascular terrestrial plants. So ferns are placed under this pteridophytes. So these bryophytes, pteridophytes, they have all existed from the age of dinosaurs to present, they have survived. So if you look into the evolutionary, uh, from evolutionary point of view, angiosperms are recent in origin when compared to uh, the bryophytes, pteridophytes, they're all very recent. So flowering plants are quite recent. Even when compared to gymnosperms, the angiosperms are quite recent in origin. So pteridophytes are much more evolved and higher than the bryophytes. So they are considered to be the first vascular plants. They have vasculature, they have xylem and phloem. So that is important aspect of pteridophytes. See from pteridophytes, you notice that the sporophytic generation is dominant. In bryophytes, the gametophytic generation was dominant. But from pteridophytes, gymnosperms and angiosperms, you notice that the sporophytic generation is dominant. So that is one aspect that you have to remember regarding the pteridophytes. So the pteridophytes include the horsetails and ferns. So they are very attractive to grow as an ornamental plant. So many of the uh, companies I have seen them, they are growing as an ornamental plant in front of their places. So they include horse tail and ferns. So pteridophytes, they include horse tails and ferns. So they are found uh, growing in cool, damp and shady places. So some flourish well even in sandy soil conditions. So evolutionarily, the pteridophytes are the first terrestrial plants to possess vascular tissues, that is xylem and phloem. So they have this water conducting tissue and food conducting tissue. For the first time, you can notice this vascular tissues in case of pteridophytes, okay? So you can see the horse tail slide and that of ferns. So in bryophytes, we had noticed the dominant phase is the gametophyte. In pteridophytes, you notice that the dominant phase, main plant body is sporophyte. It is differentiated into a genuine or a true root stem and leaf. It is not root-like, stem-like, leaf-like. Instead, there is a true type of root stem and leaf. See, Selaginella, you can notice, I have collected some of the materials from Kerala growing on some compound walls in moist regions, I collected the Selagina, Selaginella plant material. So Selaginella is one of the uh, plant material that you can correct, uh, collect for the uh, pteridophytes. If you visit Kerala, so you, I'm very sure that next time you should be in a position to identify the Selaginella. See, just look into the slides. So it is, so the main dominant plant body in pteridophytes is, the sporophyte, okay? So the gametophyte, uh, it is reduced stage gametophyte, but in bryophytes, you notice that the dominant stage was gametophyte, but in pteridophytes, from pteridophytes, the main plant body or the dominant phase is the sporophyte. So the sporophyte is differentiated into leaf-like, stem-like, and root-like. Uh, they don't have those structures. Instead, they are differentiated into true type of, true type of leaf, stem, and root. So they have a well differentiated vascular tissues. So you can see the xylem and phloem. Even though they have xylem, it is primitive type of xylem. That is, they have trichates. And since they have phloem, they have sieve cell. But in case of angiosperms, you find the advanced type of xylem. There you find they don't have trichates. They instead have trachea or vessels. So the angiosperms have trachea or vessels, whereas pteridophytes and gymnosperms, which are primitive from evolutionary point of view, they have trichates. So angiosperms have trachea or it is also called as vessels. Then uh, the angiosperms have sieve tube in phloem, whereas in case of pteridophytes and gymnosperms, they have sieve cell. So they do not have, pteridophytes and gymnosperms do not have companion cell, whereas the angiosperms have sieve tube as well as companion cell. And sieve tube is the only living plant cell without nucleus, which you notice in 
uh, the angiosperm. So the only living plant cell without nucleus is sieve tube. So in advanced plants like angiosperms, the phloem is composed of sieve tube and companion cell. In pteridophytes and gymnosperms, even though they have phloem, it is of primitive type, they have sieve cell and they do not have companion cell. Okay, remember about that. So the leaves in pteridophyte are very small, microfills we call them as, as in Selaginella. See in Selaginella, you can see that the leaves are smaller in size. See, this is a Selaginella. They have smaller in size. So we call them as microfills. Or they are larger in size as in case of ferns. You can see even tree forms of ferns are there. The next time you visit Wooty, Kodai Kinnar or Munnar, look out for the ferns. Some of the tree forms also you can notice in ferns. Okay, so the macrophils, large leaves are noticed in case of ferns. So whereas small leaves, microfils were noticed in case of Selaginella. So the economic importance of pteridophytes, if you look into, so some ferns are having medicinal value, like the ostrich fern, rattlesnake fern, then the bracken fern. So they are all having, the medicinal value is there. So some of the ornamental ferns, we grow them as ornamental plants are, so the actinotrips, so they have fan-like structures. You can see the leaves. So if you so collect these plants and conserve them, try to grow them. So because they are not only very attractive to look at, but also it is our moral duty to save these plants, conserve these plants, which are all threatened at present because of human activities. So the asparagus fern, they look like asparagus, but they are not asparagus. So we call this as asparagus fern. So dryopterus, which is a fern, and actinotepris, which has this fan-like arrangement of leaves. Then adiantum, adiantum or maiden hair fern. So they are all some of the ornamental ferns. Show Shogidwag Belsoant, the ornamental ferns they are. Okay, so they are used for medicinal purposes, economic importance. So they are also very good soil binders. Pteridophytes are also good soil binders and they reduce soil erosion. They're also grown as ornamental plants. So the sporophytes are having, in case of pteridophytes, the reproduction is, the sporophytes bear sporangia that are subtended by leaf-like structures. See in the leaves, the backside of the leaf, you can find this appendage is called sporophylls, okay? So sporophylls are leaves bearing spores. So sori and karitivi. The sori is a collection of sporangium. In each sporangium, there are spores which are produced. So the sporophyte bearing sporangia that are subtended by leaf-like appendages, we call them as sporophylls. So the spore bearing leaf-like appendages, we call it as sporophylls. At the backside of the sporophyll, you can see the different structures of sori. Sori has a large number of sporangium, collection of sporangium. Each sporangium has produces large number of spores, okay? That is what you notice in case of the reproduction. That is the first stage. In some case, the sporophylls form distinct compact structures, like they form strobili or they form cones. As in case of equisitum, you can notice this cone-like structures are formed in case of this uh, sporophylls, they are going to form distinct compact structures, which you call it as strobile, strobiles or cones. So we call this compact structure as strobili or cones, we call them as examples. Selaginella, you can notice that. Equisitum also, they exhibit this strobiles or cone-like structure, you can notice in hostile fern. Equisitum is commonly called as hostile fern, okay? So the sporangia, they produce spores by meiosis. In spore mother cells, they undergo meiosis to produce spores within the sporangium. Sporangium is spore producing structure. We call it as sac-like structure. We call it as sporangium. So the spore mother cell within that they produce, they undergo meiotic cell division to produce haploid spores. So the spores germinate and they give rise to inconspicuous, that is very small reduced generation, inconspicuous, small, multicellular, free living. See, they are not dependent. So even gametophyte in case of uh, these 
funds, they are free living, small multicellular, free living, mostly photosynthetic thalloid gametophytes. So you can notice this fern prothallus, which we call it as prothallus. See, the spores germinate to produce inconspicuous, means that is something which is not huge and clearly visible. So it is inconspicuous, small, multicellular, free living, and uh, they are not dependent on anything. They are photosynthetic also. They can produce their own food. Small, uh, multicellular, free living, mostly photosynthetic thalloid, okay? Gametophytes, thalloid gametophytes called as prothallus, okay? So in them, this prothallus, they have the male reproductive organ, anthridium, and female reproductive organ, archegonium. Okay, so the prothallus requires cool, damp, shady places to grow. Also, it needs water for fertilization. See, both angio, the bryophytes and the pteridophytes require water for their sexual reproduction. Okay, it needs water for fertilization. Because of it, just like bryophytes, pteridophytes, they don't multiply very fastly. They are limited and restricted to very few geographical areas like hill stations where moisture is more. In those regions, you find this bryophytes and theridophytes growing because for them, water is mandatory for them to undergo sexual reproduction. So their distribution is limited because of necessity of water for their reproduction, okay? So the gametophytes, prothallus, they bear male and female sex organs, that is anthridium and archegonium, they bear. So it might be on the same thallus or different thallus. So the male reproductive organ, we call it as anthridium, which produces the anthrozoites. And the female reproductive organ, the flash-shaped structure, we call it as archegonia. And they have a, each archegonia has a single non-motile egg cell. So the anthrozoites have to be transferred to the archegonia and that is carried by water. So without water, the anthrozoids cannot reach the uh, egg cell in the archegonia. So water is mandatory, just like in case of bryophytes. So the water is needed for transfer of anthrozoids, that is male gametes from anthridia to the mouth of archegonia. So water is required to transfer this male gametes. So the anthrozoid fuses with the egg in the archegonium to form zygote. So they fuse in the archegonium to form the zygote. The zygote develops to a multicellular, well-differentiated sporophyte. That is going to happen there. So the most of the pteridophytes, they produce similar kind of spores. They are homosporous plants. But in case of Selaginella, they produce two kinds of spore, the macro or megaspores and micro or smaller spores, we call it as microspores. So macrospores, which are larger in size and microspores, which are smaller in size. So Selaginella and Salvinelia. So yesterday, one of the students shared the Salvinia slide, so which is the aquatic fern. So Selaginella and Salvinia are heterosporous in nature. So you should remember that they produce two types of spores, megaspore and microspore. So the megaspores and microspores, they germinate and they give rise to uh, the megaspores forms the female gametophyte and microspores forms the male gametophyte respectively. So the female gametophytes are retained on the parent sporophyte for a short duration of time while uh, the female gametophyte zygote develop into a young embryo. This event is similar to seed habit in gymnosperms and uh, angiosperms. So heterospory is leads to the seed habit. You can notice these events. So wherein the zygote develops into young embryo. So still then they are retained in the female gametophyte. So this event is similar to the seed habit. It is considered as an important step in evolution. The retention of zygote in the female gametophyte, within the female gametophyte, still they develop into young embryo is a precursor. That is just a trailer before the seed formation. Okay, it's a precursor to the seed habit and it is considered as an important step in evolution.
okay so in the pteridophyte life cycle you can see uh, the various stages in the pteridophyte life cycle so what i have discussed that okay and also the classification of pteridophytes they are classified into four types xylopsida example xylotum they don't have leaf structures at all and they have the spore bearing structures called as synangium so xylotum is a connecting link between bryophytes and pteridophytes so they belong to xylopsida lycopsida is the second class where you have to remember the selaginella and lycopodium are placed under this lycopsida spinopsida you have this hostile fern equisetum is placed under spinopsida so teropsida they have example of dryopteris adiantum the maiden hair fern we call it as so they have this uh, hair like structures maiden hair fern and teres these are all placed under teropsida so i'll also be sharing the slides of this uh, ornamental plants and uh, also the uh, things i'll be sharing there so the after this discussion we have the next uh group and the plants gymnosperms which we'll be discussing in the next class so the pteridophytes are classified into four types xylopsida example xylotum second is lycopsida example is selaginella and the lycopodium spinopsida example is the hostile fern or equisetum teropsida the example is adiantum maiden hair fern we call it as because if you look into the stem they are hair like dark colored black hair like structure dryopteris teres they are the example for teropsida teropsida includes more of ferns like plants okay important thing that you have not to, to observe in reproduction is especially in selaginella and salvinia you can notice this salvinia is an aquatic fern see only three plants are aquatic fern one is marsilia second one is uh, the azola azola is used as a fodder i'll also share that video azola and salvinia these are the three aquatic ferns isoitis to an extent even that is aquatic but it is almost amphibious isoitis uh we don't discuss here as example see for you you have to remember the examples quoted in the textbook so selaginella and salvinia they exhibit heterospory so they produce microspores and megaspores so microspores when they fall to the soil they develop to form the male gametophyte the megaspores when they fall to the soil they develop to produce the female gametophyte so the microspores the uh, male gametophyte the anthrozoites are carried to the uh, female gametophyte in the female plant so archegonia they fuse with them there after the fusion in the archegonia you notice that the zygote is retained within the archegonia okay and then they form embryo they develop into the embryo and later they are released this is a precursor for seed habit you can notice this precursor for seed habit so heterospore and seed habit are interlinked you should understand about that so that is the reason we consider it as a precursor for seed habit seed habit is noticed in gymnosperms and angiosperms you find seeds okay so remember these uh, steps so any doubts or clarification again we'll have a discussion in the next class okay any doubts or clarifications you have you can get it clarified